There is no one to deride me But you got to have friends The feelings are so strong you got to Welcome to In the Loop with Laura. Today I'm honored to have Kay Horn on my show today. Kay is a quilter extraordinaire. She's been quilting for a long time and has done beautiful work, which perhaps you've seen in the local fair, because I know she's won many ribbons mm -hmm. and accolades from many places. As well, Kay also leads a quilt group mm -hmm. at the local seniors yes. center. So we want to hear from you about your quilting career and what you're doing right now. Let's start off, I'd like to know when did you start quilting? I started back in the 1980s. I wanted to make a quilt uh, to replicate the book that my daughter, as a toddler, had learned. And um, I thought the pictures were adorable. And of course, I replicated all of these pictures where it says A is, a, a is for apple, B is a boar, C is a cricket crawling under the door. Oh. And um, I did all of these little squares knowing nothing about quilting. I did mostly embroidery with uh, uh, applique and some things through, thrown in. That I did all things wrong when you're a quilter. My uh, first one was awful. <laughs> and I thought, uh, you know, I've got to learn to do something. The first square I made was the lamb with a lot of uh, French knots. I'm going to show it to everyone here. And uh, it was uh, it's really something that my daughter as a probably a two or a three year old learned. And, uh, but I didn't start quilting until about the 1980s. And so uh, I was putting these squares together. I was making 12 inch squares, embroidering and doing all that sort of thing. And then I thought, how can I put these together huh. with, uh, you with, know, the, with, another the, with another quilt? And uh, I, of course I didn't bring it because my daughter has it. Aww. And, uh, uh, it's on my Facebook. If you go to my Facebook page, it's my background. Okay. So you can see what it looks like. And your Facebook page is K Horn, or do you have yes, a middle K -Horn. name? Okay. K Horn. And uh, uh, it took a long time to make this. It took. Uh, I think I gave it to her when she graduated from college. Oh no! So, so how many years did you? You said you. Oh, I started probably in the uh, in the eighties, early eighties. How many years did you work on it, do you think? Oh, probably 10. Okay. <laughs> and when it was done, did it look at all like these absolutely, things? Absolutely, absolutely perfect. Perfect. Yes. So I'm guessing you had to redo blocks. No, no. No, no. <laughs> I cut all my white fabrics, <laughs> and then I, you know, I, they're probably oversized with the pages, because this is a bigger than a 12-inch square. Uh-huh. So they wow. were... Uh, it was a labor of love. That is a sign of things to come because I've seen your quilts and they're quite <laughs> precise. Now, and that also comes from an educator's heart, though. Because yes. Because you who were a teacher here. Reading at, lab teacher and then also physical education. For how many years? 42. For 42 years. That's here in Rochester. So yeah. I know a lot of you know her from different aspects and you know that she's right. a hard worker. So you did this as you were teaching and was it a just a craft? Was it a stress it was a, relief? Yeah, as a relaxation, um, you know, release from all the stress and <laughs> all the All little, you terrible children. Yes. Right. Okay. You Ron Keel was a, a, a colleague. He taught in the high school. All right. And um, his wife, Donna, mm -hmm. uh, taught a class with Carol Davis, and they met in a house, which is um, where the back lot of Walgreens is now. Okay. So I was in that location. And Donna had a beginning class t teaching the basics, and we each were taught to do a nine patch and a shoe fly pattern. And this is my very first quilt that I ever made. That you uh, finished. At, uh, that I finished all by myself. And uh, what year was this? This was uh, probably early 80s, 1981 or two. And you can see the blocks are nine patch. That's what this is. And then the corner blocks were called shoe fly, which mm. is the half square triangles. And the quilting in the center, I used a quarter to make the circles oh. and then uh, hand quilted all around them. 
And lo and behold, this quilt won a prize for the best quilting. You can see when I began to quilt, my stitches were toe catchers. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll put it up here and show you in just a moment. And but then uh, as, you, as I progressed along, they got smaller and smaller. So this is not cotton. Well, yes, it is. I think it's a blend. It it's, feels, it it's, feels uh, it's been washed, huh. but it's cotton. And this is done, each block is quilted before it's put together. Ah. And then it's sewn together uh, on the back. And you can see the squares there. But each square was individ individually quilted before it was put together. OK. And that's a quilt as you go yes, technique. Yes, yes. Um, and you machine sewed the patches together and then hand quilted, right, or did you? Right. Okay. So let's just put one of the blocks up here so you can see what this early quilt, this beginning of greatness. So here, this is all hand quilted, and like yes, she said, with the quilt quarter, use a quarter as a template. Yes, a quarter. And did you draw around it with chalk or with a pencil or anything? Uh, it was a, I believe it was pencil. Okay. Been a long time. Well, and it's been washed many times, but that <laughs> works really well. And then you did quilt, um, quilting around the edge, quarter inch around, right. so that you don't hit the seams inside. Right. So and it looks like she was a good teacher, and you were a good student. Well, she was a good teacher, but I, I was, I had a plan. I wanted to make this book into so a quilt. This, this is this is what my first quilt was. How you learned right. in order to go on and make your book. Right. Where do you want to take us next on your journey? Uh, well, I brought two quilts to show that I wanted to show as maybe what were my favorites. This one was called uh, Chevron Daisies. It was made in 2007. Let me stand up with it. And it was uh, probably the most difficult quilt that I had wanted, that I had undertaken, because mm -hmm. I had to fussy cut oh my goodness. each of the daisies in the center here. Fussy cut the daisies, and I built in a log cabin around the daisy to get the square. If you can see, this is wow. on point. And then these are setting triangles here. Yeah, that's really beautifully done with the uh, kind of the, the, I don't remember the correct term, but the fading technique from the one fabric to the other. And these fabrics would have to be very specifically bought. They were produced together in order right. to. Yes, it was the same line of fabric, May, mm -hmm. uh, Maywood fabric, I believe. And uh, then I had to fa carefully cut to get the daisy trail, which you can see as it's coming down here. Here. The daisy trail to get that. It's beautiful. It must look stunning on a bed or just hung up. Pardon? It must look stunning on a bed. Yes, it does. And I have a, a hanger on it somewhere. Was this something that you envisioned yourself, or was the pattern exactly the prairie like point, this? The prairie points. I had enough fabric left, and I thought I hated to waste it, and so I used the prairie points on the... Uh, it's really nice. Actually, somebody told me I couldn't use it, couldn't make prairie points, and I thought, yes, I can. Oh, there was your challenge. <laughs> so that was... Uh, this one made in 2007, and it did win a blue ribbon at the 4-H fair. I, I bet. And... Uh, called Chevron Daisies. It started, I started in 2006 of August and finished in June of 2007. And the fabric is from Maywood Studio and it was designed by Jackie Robinson. And then of course I told you about fussy cutting the squares and uh, this was also um, a blue ribbon winner, winner at the fair and then it uh, was um, a featured quilt for uh, Plymouth Friendship Quilt Guild one at the Life Enrichment Center in Plymouth. It's a beautiful for August of beautiful 2007. work. Thank you. Very nicely done. And that was 2007. 2007. And I'm guessing that you haven't stopped since then. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I retired in 2001, so that's when you yes threw yourself more into quilting. Right. That's correct. This quilt is um, a really it was a challenge also, but um, we were going mm. to celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary. And uh, this one I made for our, my husband. It's called Winter Whispers. He is a hunter, mm. and it's called Winter Whispers. And in the center is, of course, the deer. And around 
the deer in various squares are hunting scenes out in the woods, uh, shooting, and so on and so forth. Um, this, as I said, was my hun husband's for our 50th wedding anniversary. Mm. And it, um, Did you hide it from him? No, he knew I was okay, making it. Okay, that would be very difficult. He, he probably uh, knew what I was doing because I made one for myself after that. It was, was smaller. And it, uh, but this one uh, is, I have hanging in our bedroom, so. Well, this is, this is lovely. Um, it's wonderful to see panels used nicely and used not only just a panel with a border, but to have pieces put in, too. She has nine patches. She's um, put a very beautiful border on very expertly. And um, lovely quilting, but over all of that, when I think hunting quilt, I don't always think beautiful colors, but this really has some lovely colors. Well, it, it has to be for, a, you know, a man's quilt. Well, and then I, I appreciate that. It's a challenge to have a beautiful man's quilt, <laughs> but you've done it. All right. This was called First Frost, and uh, as I said, I made it for my husband. Uh, I had it quilted at uh, Heaven on Earth, which uh -huh. is um, on State Road 15, and uh, Cheryl Ross quilted it on her long, long arm, arm machine. machine. And this won a blue ribbon at the fair and also a champion ribbon at the fair. That's beautiful. Which you don't often get champion ribbons. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't often get blue ribbons, but you do. And I, I love, too, it has a mitered corner. Yes. Nicely done. Thank you. It's very beautiful. Then after, um, I guess, our, that one, I made many, many quilts. But then it kind of came to a uh, project where I guess my specialties now are using a little twister. And uh, I've gotten, I guess, a reputation at uh, Lolly's at Chip uh -huh. Uh we have what call, we call Moda Club, and once a month we go to Shipshawana and Lolly's up in the pu Puppet Theater. And uh, I found out that I like making Little Twister quilts. And okay. uh, Little Twister start out with... Uh, Do you have an example that we can... No, I don't have one oh, down here. Have one here. Little Twister starts out as squares that this you one? sew together in... Just to, just to sew your squares together. And then once they're sewn together, you have this little twister tool. I see. It's a little ruler. It's about three inches square, or there are larger ones, but this one, this one happens to be a three inch square. And what you do is set that little twister ruler, which has, a, has an angle, angle, on the seam, and then you cut out around it, and then you sew them back together, and you get the pinwheels. I didn't realize that there was an easier way to do that. But uh, this, this is uh, it's very forgiving because you don't have to be quite as mm -hmm. precise. Yep. And, and it, it does go quickly, even though you have to sew twice. Mm -hmm. It still goes quickly. And I, I usually make these for wall hangings, mm -hmm. and this hangs in my dining room. So. so you can see here that Kay has put on a, a little sleeve as she put on the binding. And that allows her to put a dowel through it mm -hmm. and to hang it on nails. Right. So let's take a closer look at the little twisters here so you can see. So somehow you had these four right. and then you... you... You have squares. You start out with squares. And you sew them together. You take your little twister tool after you've gotten a binding on it and you set it on the first, uh, first seam and you cut around it. I see. And then you've got a square. I found that it was very difficult if you mixed up your squares because you kind of got mixed up. But if I do one row at a time, and then sew, sew it together, it. the next row, and so on, and I worked out very fine. And it comes out really, you can't tell any, any mistakes if there are. You don't have to match uh, points. No. That no. is very nice. And this is a really nice uh, quilting design. It looks like wind is blowing through pinwheels. Yes. <laughs> Little twisters, and here I just want to show you on the back how she has applied a a little bit of a sleeve. You sew it in with the binding, right. and then you tack down the edge, right. and then you've right. got that little sleeve, and you don't have to. I, I sometimes will just stick tacks through my corners and stick them on a wall. Yeah. But after a while, and then you've got okay. So I think what started me was uh, <coughs> I made a <coughs> wedding gift for. Uh, 
cousin or something, and I made hearts. Oh. And this is a Let's heart, if up. you can see it. How beautiful. Did you plan that yourself? Uh, yes. I had scraps of pink and red and what have you. And, and then just to place the, the white in there to make the heart come down. Right. It's really nice. Same way with you make a grid. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's... Um, so this is stippling. Yep. So the quilting she's got going on in this one. Do you do any small-scale machine quilting, or you never do your machine quilting? Not too much. Chris does some of mine, and Taz does some. Okay. So here we've got a small stippling. You've got a little bit of a wave here. Got little L's up here for perhaps love, and maybe it's just loopies. Well, she has, sometimes I think she did some heart mm. from the pantograph, but I don't think there's nothing on, nothing on this one, so with hearts. Wonderful. And Let's take a look at your next one. This one is the witch's hat. I'm really not much into Halloween. Oh, wow, and that's out of the twist, too. That's incredible. You've got that down here to cut it across. The back looks like witch's fire, the collar. Ah, <laughs> because of the two different colors for the quilting. Right. And she's got stars throughout it, too, which you can see when you're close to it. That's really fun. Huh. And this one, we were having a ladybug infestation one day. <laughs> and this is a small little twister. I can't I believe that that's a twister. Isn't that amazing? And I won't probably do this one again because it's so tiny. <laughs> and then you've overstitched some yarn. Yarn, yes, for the antenna. That's amazing. Did you think this up yourself? There are tons of patterns anymore, and as you see, you know, you can see, well, I want to make that, and there just aren't enough hours in the day. <laughs> well, it looks like you've been filling a few of them. Well, so do you have a big stash that you pull out? I have time? a stash, but I buy whatever. <laughs> to match it, because these are quite precise. And this is probably the last big quilt that I've made. Uh, this is called Hello Dahlia. I tend mm. to go toward flowers a lot, uh -huh. but this one I saw uh, on the internet, and I liked the pattern. I sent for the pattern, mm. and then of course saw the fabric that I needed for it, and I didn't know where I could get the fabric, so I emailed the company, and I said where, or I called the company, and I said, I have this pattern, and I need this fabric. Where can I find it? They said, oh, California. You know, I said, well, that's too far. Then they said, uh, Yoder's in Chipshawana. <laughs> I said, oh, good. <laughs> I'm a card-carrying member. And so <laughs> I found my fabric. I think at Yoder's, and I didn't find all of it at Yoder's. And then there's one in Middlebury called Pumpkin Vine, and I found some of it there. Mm, I haven't but, been to that yet. But the main one is mm -hmm. the Dahlia. The Dahlia. And then you had to fussy cut and then follow your pattern. Well, that's a very nice modern quilt to have. Yes. It's not difficult. It has big, big blocks. But the thing that's eye-catching is that fabric that Kay wanted. And the, obviously the red, white, and black is just very eye-catching and modernistic. And it's a really nice um, border to go with that. And the, I see, for the binding, you combined them? Well, no, I didn't combine them, but I used what I had. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have enough. Well, I had some of the fabric on the back, and I wanted to use it, so I used it for part of the center, but also it's, uh, I just divided it up and used red on the back, too. Well, I think that pulls out the quilting <laughs> so nicely. It's really gorgeous. That's right, yes. Now, you have some piecing work that you're yes, our, um, completed? Last, when we ended our quilt class at the senior center, mm -hmm. um, I challenged them to make squares, blocks, for a row quilt. Well, the row quilt I was envisioning was a 12-inch block, and we made some of those, and I had s some of those in the pink bag, but I won't show those. Also, this is another row quilt that um, they're nationwide quilt shops have... Um, designed rows that go with their shop. 
and the idea was to put eight rows together mm -hmm. and then um, bring it back to the shop in a finished state, state. And if you were the first one finished, they would give you 25 fat quarters. Hmm. Well, I decided I would not win a prize, so I wanted to make the rows. And so I've got, I think I have eight rows to make, but I have four here started. This is a snowman with the snow, the um, mm -hmm. snowflake. Will you overedge those too? I'll overcast those, and I'll put nose and or I'll put eyes and buttons and with that with a snowman. This is from Nancy Jays in uh, Wabash. These are Gerber and daisies. I love it. And uh, you made a a grid or you made a patchwork, and then you put the pattern on and you, it, this is also fusible, mm -hmm. and then you overstitch it, kind of fussy cut the, the leaves. And so you've started to sew a stitch here. Are you going to then go back? I probably will on. go back and finish yep. it, yes. And uh, one, one more. One more. And this is uh, Heaven on Earth. This is their flag. And uh, they also have License plates yes. that you can purchase. Uh, you can put them on the back of your quilt. You can put them on the row, whatever you know. You can design something with that. And uh, I have also blocks. I have a block from Muncie. I have a block from Indianapolis. I have a block from uh, Florida. You get around, Kay. Well, I didn't get there. I had <laughs> people send them to me. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's fun, and I and I, you know, it's something to work on. But I can't work on this until I get what I'm working on now ah. completed because it belongs to a lady, Leanne Shrove's grandmother, mm -hmm. who's 99, and I want to finish it and get it finished. I have two rows to go on that one, and it'll be together. It's coming, Leanne. Leanne. <laughs> So tell me more about what you're doing at the Senior Center, because that's something that people in the community who are watching might be interested in joining. Okay. We meet monthly. We meet on the, right now we're meeting on the first Wednesday of the month. Uh, that can, that's up, up to change if people want a different date. I'm, I'm flexible with that. Uh, we meet at 1 o'clock in the, uh, the new room. And, at the, uh, at, the at, the, at the senior center, which is across from the Fulton right. County Public Library, and um, we meet about an hour. We have a show and tell. Okay. I invite people to show and tell things, and um, I did bring some of the blocks from, but I don't have them right here with me, so okay. they're in that pink bag. Maybe we can have an elf bring them. Maybe maybe the elf would bring them. My elf. And so do people ever come with machines? They can. I, or I brought they? my machine, but I haven't really uh, wanted to do more. So these are blocks that other people have made, yes. and you're putting them together for them? Yes. Just the top, but not the uh, not not the a quilt? Top. Yes. OK, and they are 12 inch These are 12 blocks. inches. I, the first row challenge was a house, any kind of a house, a lighthouse, a schoolhouse, a birdhouse, how a many, bar. How many people did you have come at this point? About six. Okay. I think about six. This was the birdhouse. That's adorable. Oh, my goodness. This was That's fun. Uh, it's nice to have some parameters so you know house and you're not just going to go out and do anything. Mm -hmm. But look at this person. They've got an actual piece that's been sewn down and um, buttons. It's kind of a primitive folk art mm -hmm. type. And this was Aww. another one. They're all so different. This is a house, of course. Uh, I like the bush. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a doorknob. It looks like a Dutch door. Uh -huh. And embroidered. This person yes. is an embroiderer. And this was the next row, I believe, was I don't know, maybe all the houses I have. This is a star. Uh, okay, so star then the, the next month you gave right. the star. member to be a star. And another Ooh, star. Ooh, and this is the feed sack. Another kind of a star. Hmm. Ooh, beautiful. Isn't it amazing how, e first of all, each of the patterns is different, but then how just right. different fabrics oh. change the entire mood. I think that was 
That was all of those stars, maybe, that I brought. Now, are you taking all of the houses and putting them together, or are you taking everybody's particular pieces and they'll it have will one come house out. and one star? And it one will come out looking like this, I'm pretty sure. Oh, here's some more houses. Oh. There's a few more houses. Schoolhouse or mm -hmm. whatever. These are yours, I think, Chris, or maybe your mom's. Oh. But you can take any kind of fabric, you know, and... This was scraps. Yep. I like that batik background. Then hopefully it will look something like this. This is the one old one. It's a. And again, this is just the quilt top. The quilt top, right? There we go. The there sides go. up. Oh, I see. So you're doing basically a block of a month. Right. Uh huh. And you're all producing a quilt. We have so stars. Stars and trees. Houses or whatever. Houses. Um, snail's, snail's trail. trail. This was the name of, of an animal or something. Bear's paw. Bear's oh. paw. Snail's trail. Uh, this was a log cabin. Log cabin and the bottom's a pinwheel. Right. So it this could be, you know, this was out of scraps. Could be uh, it could anything be. to be just to be using up scraps. And, and it's also a way of learning a technique to mm -hmm. use a different kind of block and um, I think it, it's fun to do. Oh well, that's not wonderful. I'm so glad that you have taken your talent and you're using it to teach and these are just such bright colorful points in a house but also in a day just to get together right. and to quilt together. We have so days where we quilt, we'll quilt for uh, Linus, we'll quilt uh -huh. chil children's quilts, uh, we quilt for the uh, pediatric uh, hospital unit mm -hmm. in uh, Plymouth, Marshall County. Um, we usually call them Super Bowl sew days because we don't watch Super Bowl, but we go for sewing. And uh, you have a day of have a day of sewing. For that. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, I would encourage those of you in the community to check out Kay's Facebook page and see that beautiful quilt, which I want to do the first one that she, or the first one she planned, not the first one she finished for her daughter. <laughs> right. And I'd also encourage you um, if you're a uh, a lady who quilts and you're at home alone, come and join some people, make some new friends, and it's always inspirational. Um, you always leave seeing something that you hadn't made and you hadn't thought of, and the pictures just look wonderful. Thank you. I always say, you know, don't, don't quit. Don't keep challenging yourself, even if, you, uh, if you're afraid of, you know, to get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Try something new, and I... I you know, I didn't know anything about quilting when I first started. I used to embroider a lot. I used to knit some. Uh -huh. Didn't knit a lot, but I knit some. And uh, try new patterns. You know, see something that inspires you and go for it. Right. And mm. I would say um, a couple of my favorite sites that have great tutorials okay. and uh, uh, instructions are uh, Missouri Star Quilt Company. I really like those. And the next one, that if you need patterns, this lady has a gazillion patterns. It's uh, www.quilterscache.com. Okay. And how do you spell that? C-A-C-H-E. Yep, quilters with an S, C-A-C-H-E, quilterscache.com. Right. And if you, you know, you can order fabric over the internet, of course mm -hmm. you pay your postage and handling, and if you need something that you can't get from Joann's or, or locally. Threadshed. Threadshed has a very nice uh, quilting fabric, has some really nice quilted, all pre-quilted pre fabric mm -hmm. right now. And, and there is going to be a new quilt store opening in the vicinity, and I'm going to interview that new uh, owner coming up okay. soon. Scarlet Thread, Julie Baldry. Judy, Judy, right. So uh, anyway, I encourage anybody to take up quilting if you want. Absolutely. And, uh, so can a man quilt, Kay? Absolutely. Yes. There are some star quilters out there who are men. Please do not let that influence you for making something beautiful out right. of fabric. Ricky Tim just comes to mind. Absolutely. He's Kathy fantastic. Fassett. Yeah. <laughs> you had him on with yarn or yep. something last or I um, had a pinched him. Younger gentleman on. Yep. So please just be creative. And uh, Kay, I'm so glad that you came on and shared your some, a segment of your thread, a uh, wonderful stash of quilts, and I'm glad that you are still going out and being creative. It's wonderful. Thank you.
together like